acids and conjugate bases, and uh, a new equilibrium constant that we are denoting as Kw. The Bronsted-Lowry definition of an acid and a base is that an acid is a proton donor and a base is a proton acceptor. Now let's just keep in mind that a hydrogen ion is proton. So that's what we mean by proton is a hydrogen ion. Remember, a hydrogen has a proton and one electron and if that electron is removed so that it becomes a hydrogen ion, all that's left over is the proton. So a hydrogen ion is a proton. Now according to this idea of an acid in a base, water can act like a Bronsted-Lowry base. When it accepts a proton from an acid to form a hydronium ion. We have any old acid, okay, so this A means the anion of any acid. So this could be a Cl for hydrochloric. It could be acetate for acetic acid. Okay, so this is just a variable. And if we put that acid in water, what's going to happen is that water is going to pick up the hydrogen ion to become this thing called hydronium. 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 And whatever is left over. So, this is basically a dissociation of an acid. Uh, but instead of this being H plus, plus whatever the ion is, what we now know as we're taking our knowledge deeper and deeper is that this is the hydro hydronium ion that is formed. There's never protons just floating around in solution. They always get picked up by water. Okay, so water can act like a base. All right, now we're going to be introduced to some new terms. So we've got an acid here, and it's going to dissociate in water. Okay, water is going to act like a base. And so now we're going to call hydronium a conjugate acid. And we're going to call the anion of the original acid a conjugate base. Hmm. So what does this mean, okay, a conjugate acid? Well, they, they're always in pairs, number one. So this is the conjugate acid of this base. Why is it an acid? Because now it's got a hydrogen ion, it can donate. It's got a proton, it can donate. So these are a pair, base and its conjugate acid. An acid and its conjugate base. So the conjugate base is everything that's left over from the acid after it has donated its proton. Conjugate base is everything that remains of the acid molecule after the proton is lost. A conjugate acid is formed when a proton is transferred to a base. Okay, so let's do a couple of dissociation reactions to, um, to try to embed this in our brains. So um, we're going to start with an acid dissociation. So let's say we've got... We're going to make it easy. We're going to make HCl. So HCl aqueous plus water. It's going to give us H3O plus. And it's going to give us chloride ion. Okay, so this is the dissociation reaction of hydrochloric acid. So this is our acid. Water is behaving like a base. 
That is our what? That is our conjugate acid of this base. How do we know it's conjugate acid? Because now it's got a hydrogen to donate. So this is a conjugate acid of this base, water. And chloride is the conjugate base of HCl. So now it's base in that now it's ready to pick up a hydrogen ion. It can accept a hydrogen ion. Water is amphoteric. And that means that water can behave either as an acid or as a base. So we just saw water behave like we just saw water behave like a base. Hey Miss Moss. Hello. Hi there. Okay, it's picking up the hydrogen ion from this acid. But water can also act like an acid. So let's see that. So we've got a base. Let's call it ammonia. going into water. When ammonia goes into water, it's going to form ammonium ion plus hydroxide. So in this case, ammonia is base and what is water behaving like? It's behaving like Acid because it's giving up its hydrogen ion to ammonia to make ammonium. So ammonium then is going to be the conjugate acid of ammonia and hydroxide is going to be the conjugate base for water. So, again, water is amphoteric. It can accept a hydrogen ion or it can donate a hydrogen ion. Now, we're going to look at something called the auto-ionization of water. So, when you have a sample of water, you think you've got a sample, a pure sample of H2O, if it's distilled water. All that's in there is H2O, but in fact, that is not the case. In fact, there is a portion of the water that is split up. It's ionized. So, this reaction this equation symbolizes the auto-ionization of water in that two waters ionized to form a hydronium. So one of these two waters is picking up a hydrogen ion from one of the waters, leaving hydroxide in the solution. So let's write an expression for this auto-ionization of water. So this particular K is Kw. Products. We know it's hydronium, but we don't ever write it that way. We write it as hydrogen. Hydrogen products of overreactants, but our reactant is what? 
a pure liquid. So it's over 1, right? So okay, W is equal to H plus times OH minus. That is KW. The equilibrium expression for the autoionization of water. The value of KW is 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14. Okay. Is that a large or a small value for K? That's a pretty small value for K. 1 times 10 to the minus 14. So what that's telling us, of course, is the autoionization of water. Uh, the equilibrium for that lies very, very far to the left. So in solution, in, in a given sample of water, there's not a lot of ionized water. But it's still there because it's what gives water its pH. So, if we plug into the expression 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14 is equal to H plus OH minus, that tells us then that at 25 degrees Celsius, the hydrogen ion concentration is 1.0 times 10 to the minus 7, and the hydroxide concentration is 1.0 times 10 to the minus 7. So at 25 degrees Celsius, we can always bank on this. And so going back and forth in pH problems, we can also use Kw to go back and forth between the hydrogen ion concentration and the hydroxide ion concentration. Because at 25 degrees Celsius, Kw is always this value. So whatever this might be in a differing pH, this is a neutral solution right here. A neutral solution with the pH of what? A pH of 7. The negative log of this is 7. But one other thing to keep in mind about the autoionization of water. Okay, so pH of a neutral solution at 25 degrees Celsius is 7. But the autoionization of water is temperature dependent. At a higher temperature, Kw is not 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14. Kw is 4.07 times 10 to the minus 14. So this larger value of K will shift this equilibrium which way? A larger value of K is going to shift the equilibrium more to the right. So the higher the temperature of water, the greater the hydroxide and the hydrogen ion concentration in the water. So in this case, Kw is 4.07 times 10 to the minus 14. And so the... Um, the pH of this solution, and we could do the math, you can do the math, 4.07 times 10 to the minus 14. Okay, so if we're talking about a neutral solution where H plus is equal to OH minus, we end up getting a pH value, a neutral pH value of water at 45 degrees Celsius. 6.7. We are going to have hydrogen and hydroxide concentrations that are higher than they are at 25 degrees Celsius. And therefore, this is still a neutral solution because the concentrations of hydrogen and hydroxide are identical, but the pH of the neutral solution is going to be lower. Okay, so we've got to keep this in mind, is that we
we say that water has a neutral pH of 7. And that is a good approximation. But that is not the absolute case. Yes, room temperature water has a neutral pH of 7. But warmer water does not have a neutral pH of 7. It's got a lower pH than 7. So, the autoionization of water is temperature dependent. As the temperature goes up, the equilibrium is going to shift right. And so is the autoionization of water endothermic or exothermic?